Hello and welcome to this edition of Art Alive Film. As you can see, we're in St James's Cemetery in Liverpool, taking a walk amongst the tombstones, similar to Liam Neeson. Of course, our DVD review. But we also go deep, deep and darker still for Ex Machina. And we also travel back to 1981 for a most violent year. Okay, first up, Ex Machina. Brilliant, brilliant film. Written by and Al directed by Alex Garland. Indeed. He of The Beach, obviously, uh, the novel, and he uh, wrote 28 Days Later. He wrote for Danny Boyle. For Danny Boyle, yeah. Now, this is his first film as writer and director. It's his debut, and boy, what a debut. What a, what a film. Sci-fi thriller. Absolutely brilliant at all uh, times. Domhnall Gleeson plays a very talented coder who works for the biggest internet company in the world. He's won a competition. Won a competition to spend the week with his CEO, uh, a millionaire, at his uh, mountain retreat. Nathan, played by the amazing um, Oscar Isaac. Yeah, God, what an actor. Yeah, uh, brilliant. But more about him in a minute. The location itself is fantastic. Uh, filmed in Norway, the, all the exteriors are filmed in Norway, it's, uh, in the mountainous region. Uh, beautifully done and the seclusion helps with the story itself yeah because you've got basically a th three-hander with these three yeah characters that's right tell um, them a little bit about who's, okay who, who else is um Domhnall uh finds out once he he meets his uh he meets nathan that he has to participate in uh, an experiment that he will be interacting with a piece of artificial intelligence a robot for want of a better word and um, it's all about uh, reading each other's emotions. Absolutely. The test is to see if um, the AI is perfect, isn't it? Yeah, There's and of a course. particular test he has to, the set of questions he, he needs to speak to um, Ava, this uh, robot. Beautifully played by uh, Alicia Vikander. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, really finding the stride. Oh, yeah. Now, in, uh, Alicia, of course, we spoke about a couple of weeks ago in uh, Testament of Youth. Uh, which we didn't quite no, get. Did very we? aloof, very cool. Yeah, but perfect for this. Perfect for this. She she pulls it off beautifully. Um, so this drama then plays out with this uh, this computer programmer talking to Ava each day and yeah. a set of questions. But you know Nathan, the inventor of, of, of he's got AI, a, he's got a different ag well a hidden agenda, a hidden agenda, yeah. and yeah. that slowly comes to the surface. But it's a great film. It's a film with silence. Yeah. Lots of cameras slowly creeping up corridors. Very cool. We said, didn't we? We felt it was quite uh, Stanley Kubrick. Oh, very Kubrick. Aloof, uh, yeah. but not in a bad way, which actually sorted. You know, you've got, as I say, just a great three hand yeah. there. And financed by Film 4, interestingly enough, it, this does not look like a TV movie. No. It, it's all up there on the screen. Very cinematic. Um, Alex Garland takes his, um, his template, the, the play stroke film Sleuth, uh, which is interesting when you look Absolutely. at the... Absolutely, and it makes sense. sense. I think it's the next model. It's going to be the real breakthrough. Well, what do you do with the old one? You have to help me. One day the AIs are going to look back on us. Upright eight all set for extinction. Is it strange to have made something that hates you? What were you doing with Ava? So, next up is a most violent year. What did you think of that, Tony? Yeah, excellent. Uh, awesome. I say I was going to say crime drama, but that's not quite no, right. It's not. Is it? It's a, it's a difficult one to sort of put in a box. This one, and all the better for it. Uh, J. C. Chandor uh, directs. This really? is his third film. You might remember Margin Call with Kevin Spacey and Jeremy Irons, or All Is Lost with Robert Redford, Brilliant. a one-hander out at sea on a boat. This guy is a real talent. Um, okay, the story tell. Well, the story takes place in 1981, and, and it takes its title from, statistically, it was the most violent year of New York's history. Yeah. Um, so you have this sort of palpable 
sort of um, uh, violence going on in the background. Everyone, there's a tension there, isn't mm. there? And of course, we've got this immigrant, um, Abel Morales. Now, yeah. the, the the name Morales Abe. Moral, it's, yeah. it's all it's all in the in the name. Uh, played by played by the great Oscar Isaac again, and he is fantastic. Double take, and you see Al Pacino in this. Uh, throughout. To me, we could see echoes of Carlito's way oh, in, uh, yeah. in his performance. The Godfather, Serpico. Absolutely. But in, a, in, in but a great way. Yeah, indeed. Chanda directs like a cross between Martin Ritt and the great Sidney Lumet. Absolutely. Um, There's Prince of the City in there, oh, Serpico. Yeah. The, the city is a star in this movie. Location is everything here. But the drama is it comes thick and fast. It's about, um, as I say, Abel is an immigrant businessman who's trying to start up his business and expand he's um, into oil isn't he he's oil, into uh, an oil, oil a heating business. oil business yeah. but he's plagued by corruption dishonesty um and it's it's, it's palpable throughout yeah it how can how can you keep any form of honesty and conduct your business when everyone around you yeah is is doing everything to undermine what you're indeed, doing indeed. can you actually rise above that yeah. are you able to the, i think that's where the michael Corleone thing comes in because yeah, if you remember yeah. in the godfather michael Corleone fought to try and make his business legal well here abel tries to keep everything on the straight and narrow he's he's um persecuted by the da yeah. Um, his wife, a uh, great performance by Jessica Chastain, Brilliant. who may or may not be Lady Macbeth, we don't yeah. know, but it, um, it's, it, it's a fantastic film, it's it, the great performances throughout. Uh, the, the cinematographer, who is Bradford Young, it could almost, he shoots it like Gordon Willis of the... Um, the Absolutely, Godfather. and what, what's brilliant about this, a lot of the iconography, the set pieces, um, you, you'll think you've seen you, you think you've seen it and just where you think you go oh i know where this is going to go it takes you to a completely different place so well worth oh, well yeah. worth a look two hours well worth your time absolutely yeah go class, and see class act. okay well that's it for part one part two we get out and about Hence our winter attire where we go walking amongst the tombstones with liam neeson no um, less yeah, and we also talk to um, Liverpool filmmaker Roger Appleton, who won't be amongst the tombstones. He's in his office, actually. Indeed. It's warm in there. Okay, okay. see you then. Okay, welcome back to part two, Art Alive Film, coming to you from the Odeon Liverpool one. What have we got for the note, huh? Well, this week we caught up with uh, Liverpool filmmaker Roger Appleton, spoke to him at his uh, Rodney Street offices, so have a look at this. Hi Roger, thanks for coming to talk to us, or allowing us to come to talk to you today. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, tell me something about yourself. Okay, well I started making films probably about 20 years ago, um, in the days when I used to be a lecturer at um, a college in Widnes and the, the beginning of my filmmaking career um, started when I was teaching a class of gardeners and I was supposed to be teaching art and design to them, um, design for gardens and the lessons weren't going very, very well at all and I found in an old cupboard in the college a Sony Rover camera and this was an old black and white video camera that had an umbilical cord going to a reel to reel tape recorder, video tape recorder. So I set this up in the classroom and I said to these lads, we've not been getting very far with our lessons, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna discuss that and I'm gonna film it with this camera that I found and we'll, we'll play it back and watch it. So I turned round to press the plain record on the, on the video recorder. It took me a while to get the keys down. I turned back and to a man, 13 of them had stood up, dropped the pants and showed their asses. And I suddenly thought, this is a powerful thing, this camera. I like this. I should do more with this. So um, I ended up making pop videos for people for nothing. As, as people, that's how you learn how to make films. And finally, one of the bands that I made a pop video for got a recording deal. They never made it, but they got a deal, and I got paid to make their first video. Okay. And actually, that the, the lead singer is now the chief executive of the Sound City Festival in Liverpool, Dave Pitcherlinga, who's a band called 35 Summers. Um, 
And then I went on, I got fed up of working with bands because, you know, five lads together with guitars, they can be a little bit of a pain. Um, sorry, lads. Um, and so I persuaded Granada um, with another friend of mine, Lol. We had, we had a company called Strong Films um, to do a documentary called West Bank Twin Town. And it was about a pair of musicians who lived in Widnes uh, in this particular area called West Bank. And everything they did was an attempt to interpret that community either through painting or music or photography. And we did a, a documentary about them for Granada. And on the back of that, I did more TV programmes and, and that's how I started really, I suppose. So how easy is it to make a living as an independent filmmaker on Merseyside? It's not easy. It's not easy at all. You have to be very flexible. Um, and you would have to be not proud, certainly, and accept any work that comes your way. Okay. Um, so as, as an example of that, I did a, um, a documentary about 12 months ago, which is a, for international distribution, relatively big budget. It's going to be shown in Australia, America, all over the place. And as part of that, I interviewed some of the kind of the great musicians of Liverpool, you know, people from Echo and the Bunny Men, Orchestral Manoeuvres. So th this is the city that... The city of the Rock of the World. City of the Rock of the World. The same, one of the same weeks I was filming, I think I'd just interviewed um, Ian McCulloch from Echo and the Bunny Men. You know, one of the kind of iconic people sure. of Liverpool music. That same week, I filmed the directions between the multi-story car park and the outpatient to the Liverpool Heart and Chest Hospital for their website. Now, with the greatest respect to the Liverpool Heart and Chest Hospital, that's not going to win me a BAFTA. Yeah. Um, but I was, I, I'll take it because they pay me. Okay. And so you have to be flexible. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you just have to... It's almost last man standing, really. How did the City That Rock the World come about? Um... I was contacted by a guy called Gary Popper, who became the producer of the film, um, and he'd got uh, a distribution company and a film finance company based in London interested in financing the project. Mm -hmm. um, and it, essentially, what the, they were interested because they could see it was a subject matter. It was about the history of Liverpool music that they could sell around the world. You know, attach the word Beatles to a film, and it sells around the world. Um, but what attracted me to the subject was that the kind of, if there was a strap line underneath the city that brought the world, it was Liverpool bigger than the Beatles. And it was, a, it was about the Beatles, but it was about all that other music that's been produced in the city over the last maybe 60 years, which demonstrates we're not a one band town. You know, there's many, I think it's, you know, famously, is it more hits come from Liverpool than anywhere else in mm -hmm. Britain? Um, and the music scene here has been alive and has been vibrant for you know at least 60 years, if not longer. One, two, three, five. I think the Beatles have got a lot to answer for. Everything else tends to be footnote in history or forgotten, you know. And was that something of a passion project for you? Um, I, th I think what, what Gary hadn't realised is if he hadn't paid me to do it, I'd have still done it. Right. Um, you know, it was, it was I'm, I'm, I've been a passionate music fan all my life. Although I was only very, very young at the time, I kind of grew up with the Beatles. I've listened to, I can remember moving to, I've lived in Liverpool for maybe 30 years. And I can remember the first week in Liverpool, walking around Sefton Park with an old Sony Walkman, with Ocean Rainbow echoing the Bunnymen on the, on the headphones, thinking what a wonderful city it was. And, you know, I, I, I'm very passionate about music and I'm passionate about Liverpool music. Um, it's interesting how projects come about really. This is um, a project that's actually been done in conjunction with Lancaster University. And it's a documentary about precarious living. Um, the, the idea is that people who live precariously have to cope with all sorts of difficulties in life. It's a day by day existence, you know, you never know where the next meal's coming from. And what um, 
a guy from Lancaster University, uh, Matthew Johnson, who's a, a, an academic there, wanted to do was look at how different communities cope with precarious living. So we've been filming with um, a community in Ashington, which is about 15 miles north of Newcastle in the northeast of England. It's an old pit village or pit town, which obviously has fallen on hard times because of the, um, the issues around mines closing and the difficulties of employment up there. So we've been filming with a group of people there and we've also been filming with a group of Aborigines who live in and around the Brisbane area of Australia. Uh, Aborigines are, have got a particular um, precariousness in Australia because of the historical thing of, you know, it was their land and it was taken off them and there's all sorts of issues and social problems around their communities. So we've done some filming in both communities and then this year in March, the Ashington people are going to go over to Australia for a month to live with the Aboriginal community. So we'll be following that story. And then the Aboriginal people, I think it's in May or June, are coming back over here and living in Ashington for a month. And the idea, I suppose, is that can these communities learn off each other about how to deal with precarious living and what it means for their communities. And unusually for television, we've taken the step of saying to the people and the participants in the film that we're making this film with you rather than about you. And so we've taken a, we might come to regret this, I don't know, but we've taken the step of saying to them, don't sign your release and consent forms until the film is finished and until we're all happy about the content. That's only fair enough, isn't it? Okay, so future projects, what, what got anything else in line? Um, well, interestingly, actually, earlier this year, I shot a couple of um, music films with uh, Ian Prowse um, for two records, and one which I'm particularly um, proud of, which was a, a called Less We Forget, and is around First World War um, commemoration, mem uh, the memory of the First World War, which was in, not entirely shot, but mostly shot in the town hall, where they have a, a, a lovely memorial room to people who, from Liverpool who died in, in the First World War. I'm hoping I'm going to do some more work with Ian. And then we're also developing um, a series of films around John Lennon. Um, not particularly about Lennon's music, but about Lennon as the person and what made him and what was what went on in his childhood to create the person who later became, you know, the, the John Lennon that everybody knows. So in a sense, I suppose, trying to lift the lid on the bits of Lennon still that people don't know about. And who are you working on uh, with for those that project? Again, it's the same producer that made Sister of the World and probably the finance will come from the same same source. So thanks Roger, thanks for your time and we wish you well uh, with all those projects. Thanks so much. And the holiday atmosphere banished the fears of how many of us would fall. Okay, DVD reviews. This week it's A Walk Amongst the Tombstones with uh, awesome. Liam Neeson. Uh, what do we say about this? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a modern war, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, it drips atmosphere. Interesting thing about this, uh, before Liam came on board, Harrison Ford was down... Uh, to star in this. I would imagine a very different film. A very different film, yeah. Uh, it's about moral choices. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Liam plays uh, an ex-cop turned private investigator, also a recovering alcoholic, which is important, folks. So, As uh, he says, he does favours and in return receives gifts. Yes, indeed. So, so it's not the typical thing. private investigator doing it for the, uh, yeah. the hard cash. So he... Um, Eventually, he, he sets to work with Ray Stevens, putting in a brilliant performance. Ray Stevens, late of Downton Abbey, uh, playing an American uh, drug uh, dealer, uh, who Liam uh, initially will not work with because of uh, his, connections. his connections. But he actually he's he's there to track down the two sociopathic kidnappers who killed uh, Ray's wife. And not uh, just, and not just the wife, is it? No, I mean, not just the, the wife. These yeah. two, these two are, are quite scary. Aren't yeah, they? dark yeah. villains in this, folks. Be prepared. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Marlowe, uh, Sam Spade, both name checked. Both name checked by uh, 
one of one of one of the uh, stars in there. Yeah, and uh, no, uh, an excellent thriller. Uh, plenty of twists and turns. Yeah, if you like your if you like your thrillers, dark, um, grainy, grainy, full of atmosphere. This is the one for you. And Liam Neeson gives a great turn. Yeah, forget about uh, Taken Three, folks. This is Liam. This at his is best. this is him at his brooding best. Well worth it. Okay, well, that's the end of this edition of Art Alive Cinema, coming to you from the Odeon Liverpool One. Uh, indeed, the end of our January schedule. And what a month it's been. It's been fantastic. We've had some crackers this month. Yeah, and we hope you've enjoyed being with us at the cinema, and we look forward to seeing you next month for more film reviews, DVD reviews, and hope you a bit of fun. See you then. See you then. <laughs> Roger Apple, uh, Roger Apple, <laughs> Apple Buddy. Apple Buddy. <laughs> Roger Apple Pie. Apple iPad. <laughs> Should we do that again? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Okay. Okay. Well, this week we caught up with uh, Liverpool filmmaker Roger Appleton at his Rodney Street studio. Uh, it's not even a studio. It is, isn't it? Could be. Could be. If you build, knock the wall through. Are we going to do that? Yes, let's do it. Can we do it again, please, Dave? <laughs>